great big HK TV welcome here at Hard Knocks Television, the home of Hard Knocks Entertainment. And we're kicking it off in this episode, part two of our How To Play Fire Pro Wrestling series. Now, if you've missed part one, don't worry, I will be leaving a card in this corner and I'll also be leaving a link in the description so that you don't miss anything. In part one, we were dealing more with the grappling basics, but I do feel free to check that out if you need assistance with that as well. So moving on, we've got the character creation. Now the first two steps, as you can see, but yes, wrestler name and profile and wrestler appearance. Now they're pretty self-explanatory. I don't shouldn't really need to explain them to you. If I if I do need to explain them, then I think you're playing the wrong game. So moving on, that takes us to skills. Now this goes back to and I suppose the first step does obviously start with the name and appearance and profile. You want to have a character in mind when you do this. And it makes it so much easier to build your skills around that. So you might want like Big Bob and Big Bob's a giant and, you know, he uses a lot of power moves and throws people around. That's, you know, that's, that's just an example off the top of my head, but something like that. But move, getting back, the wrestler rank, I've set it to C, which is kind of mid-card for the benefit of this tutorial. But basically, they go from A to E. In fact, I think they go from S to E, sorry. Now, S is your superstar top-tier guys. And E would obviously be your rookies or or bottom curtain jerker guys, you know, robbers. Although the way this game works, even the guys that are low, they, they can pull out some surprises. We have seen it. If you've been watching my shows, you know what I'm talking about. Fighting style, again, all different fighting styles, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It really goes down to what you want your character to do but obviously you still want to keep that fighting style and return skills in mind because it will affect your move set and certain moves are more compatible with certain move sets so obviously if you choose for instance if i was to go and choose ground then obviously it's more suited to ground titan. And it's not to say that I couldn't give my guy a few power moves, but they won't be as effective because his fighting style is more suited to ground. So it's something to think about when you're making these characters. Now, critical ability, again, self-explanatory. All your different sections, finisher, strikes, suplex, submissions, and... Basically, whatever one of them you select, that's where, you know, that's where you're more likely to hit critical. Now, just a, before I go on, this is more to do with if you're making computer-controlled wrestlers. If you're playing single player, then to be honest, all these stats and stuff, they don't really matter too much, to be honest. They still come into play a wee bit. But for the most part, they don't really matter because you're playing single. So it's really more down to your skill as a player than actually the skill of the character you're playing. Now, special skill. This, this takes a wee bit more explaining. And this is something that this is something that confuses me at times. I'm not going to lie. Now, for the special skills, there's quite a long list here, and I'll break. I'll basically break them down for you, right? Because the different skills give different bonuses depending on what they are. Now, 
The first on the list would be stardom. Now stardom, as it's described here, and there's and if you if you want to see a complete list, now I haven't done one personally, but uh, I will probably do do so later. But there is one on there is one that's been provided on the Fire Pro Wrestling World Steam page. You go into Steam, you go into Steam Communities. It's in general discussion now. Brendel 2006 has done a full explanation of this. So shout out to Crendel 2006 for that because I'm not going to lie. Even I've had to check on it because this whole special skill thing it is quite complicated. There's a few times I've had to go back to this list and go, what does this do? The first on the list would be Stardom. Star a character with Stardom, they get more involved with crowd support and we tend to repeat the more popular moves in their moveset. Now the requirement for that is you use a performance move, and a taunt basically, when your stamina is low. So when your stamina is low, you can do a taunt and that will increase your next attack after that turn by 25%. Then we've got Quick Return. It's worth 15 points, as is Stardom. And I'll explain more about the points later. Now, Quick Return is the player may stand right up after a major attack. The for that is remaining stamina must be at five between five to twenty percent. Spiritual strength is above sixty. But the benefit of that is, after an opponent's attack, you will stay on the ground one eighth of the time that you normally would. Get up quick. Then we have overturn. It costs fifteen points. And description, repeated reversals result in greater damage each time. The requirement is remaining stamina below 10% and spiritual strength is above 30%. The effect is the rate of critical is doubled. So for that overturn, as they said, it basically means that every... Every reversal you do is likely to do more damage. And it, while you're doing the overturn, you have a higher chance of hitting your critical. Double. Start dash costs 15 points. That's the next one. Able to end match earlier than normal. Remaining stamina has to be above 70. All attack parameters are increased by one point. Guts is the next one. It costs 15 points. Description will not give up easy. Requirement, stamina and spirit are at zero percent. Effect, wrestler will give up to a submission hold at least one twentieth of the normal rate. Seven is strike back, costs 15 points. Rejuvenate stamina when opponent shows sign of fatigue. Requirement, remaining stamina below 5%. Effect, two points are added to all attack parameters. Said this is quite a long list. Then we have finish, plus 15 points. Extremely effective finishing maneuver. Use your finisher the first or second time in a match. That's the requirement. The effect is that the offensive power of your finisher is increased by 150%. It only works for the first or second finishers. But obviously, you know, that 150% gives you a better chance. Now, nine is blood. Now, this is, this is more for your hardcore wrestlers. It costs 15 points. And the description is that bleeding increases spirit. 
obviously the requirement for that is to shed blood. The effect of that is the offensive power of all your moves are increased by 10% while bleeding. Then 10 is the definite hardcore one. Hardcore. Costs 15 points and basically it turns your character into weapons. And that's the description. Effect is plus 3 to attacks and defense with all, with all weapons. Now, 11 on the list is focus. It costs 15 points. Skip this gives you extra attack resistance. And the effect of that is strike, submission, and technical critical rates are halved. Then we have adapt. That's 12 on the list. It costs 15 points as well. Most of these cost 15 points. Description of that is roll with big attacks. The effect is suplex and power critical rates are lowered by 75%. So it makes it a lot harder for you to be defeated by a suplex or a power critical. Number 13 is hard body. Costs 85 points. And basically it means that the wrestler has a healthy, tough body. The effect of that is it's harder to get a pin unless with big moves. Hard body is a one. I've got a couple of wrestlers using that. Now Mickey Tourette has the hard body. That's why he's that's why he's so tough. If you want an wrestler that's tough can take a lot of damage of nice big long matches, then hard body's one to go. I I would I would recommend it just know that's what you're doing. Now the next ones on the list are more expensive and point wise that's because they involve a combination of the different skills we've mentioned earlier get the same effect so, superstar it costs 25 points and the effects of that are co a combination of stardom and finish warrior costs 25 points fast kill and quick stand the effect of that is Quick return and start dash. Combination of those. Then we have second wind, twenty five points. It gives you an o it gives you overturn and quick return. Rage gives you it's twenty five points. It gives you strike back and quick return. Banish costs twenty five points. Gives you added concentration in battle. The effect of that is an overturn and focus. Spirit costs 35 points. And the effect of that is stardom, over and straight back. Then we have monster for your monster characters. It gives stardom, one hit finisher and adapt. To be honest, it's a little bit overpowered monster, but if that's what you want to go for, then by all means. But a lot of the e feds that are going around, uh, they tend to a lot. There's a few of them that don't allow the monster trait or the monster character for that reason. It's so overpowered. So if if you're creating a character for the e feds, then you might want to check with them before you make the character. Something to think about. Then we've got do or die, 35 points as well. It gives overturn, guts, and strike back. Then we have last on the list, reborn, 35 points, and it combines guts, focus, and hard body. That's the complete list. As I said, you can check that on the general discussion part on the Fire Pro Wrestling World discussion page on Steam.
Moving on. For this, I'm just going to leave the special skill as none. Now, recovery, as you see, you've got slow, medium, or fast. Now, it's pretty self explanatory, but obviously, this is going to affect your different points. Now, I'm going to go with mediums. So that's six points. Recovery when bleeding, I'll just leave that. I'm just going to, I'm basically just creating an average structure for the benefit of explaining to you guys. Breathing again affects your way of breathing and catching your breath. Now, breathing is important, especially in the longer matches. Now, so obviously, if you want someone that's going to be able to pull out the longer matches and have more stamina, then you want to maybe go for normal or good. Now, as you can see, you've got your edit points at the moment. Now, at the moment, this is the bog standard guy. At 117 points, so that's kind of low to middle range. Anywhere at about 125 to 150, 125 to 150, probably be your lower card, guys. And then 150 to about 180, be your, be your mid cards. 200 is your rising stars. And then 222, 30, anywhere above, anywhere there or higher. That's your talk to your guys. Now, you want to balance all this out when you're making your wrestler, especially if you're making them for a new bed. Because what happens if you just max out all the stat, then you end up getting what's called a cement wrestler. Uh, you'll see some of them on screen. Now, what a cement wrestler is, is basically it's a wrestler that's created in the game and it's created for the sole purpose of winning matches, doesn't lose. And also, because a lot of them have everything stacked up and everything, you find that the character tends to arm moves and that, and they don't have very exciting matches. That's why a lot of you feds will say, away, uh, because it's basically cheating. Now, Breathing when bleeding, pretty self-explanatory. But it, but it is your basically your stamina and your guts, you know, ability to get back up when you've had a beat down. But it when bleeding, exchange blows. Now that's again it's self-explanatory. It's a little, it's the little exchange blows mini game that you saw me talk about in previous episodes. Now you can turn this off if you just want to get straight to the grappling. Again, it's really down to personal preference. Neck endurance, back endurance. Again, these are all self-explanatory. Really no... Uh, really no better way of explaining that. Movement speed. Now, again, self-explanatory, but obviously, if you're wanting the high flyer guys, then probably want to get their speed up a bit. But I mean, there's not, there's, there's no rules anywhere that says that you can't have a high flyer that moves really slow. It would be quite interesting to see, but you know, you could, it, it's, it's down to you. Up and down speed. Now, this is the one that I touched on in the previous episode. Up and down speed really is the bread and butter for high flyers. This is how quickly your high flyer can get to the top rope and basically do all that area stuff. Area? All that aerial stuff. At the moment I've got, I'm going to, I've got me average. Favourite weapon, self-explanatory. These ones here again. Theme music and voiceovers, self-explanatory, nothing more to say here. Now, parameters. This is what I was touching on. You want to try and balance it out. Now, by default, it is 
fairly balanced. It's, you know, everything's at four points. So, if I was to leave that as is, it would probably do okay, you know? But, obviously, you're trying to make it, like, more to do with move set that you've got in mind. Now, on to the move set. Now, I'm not going to go and go through this too much because it can take ages. Especially if you really go into it, it can take, it can take hours. I mean, there's the, the number of moves in this game, there's literally hundreds of moves to choose from in this game. And of course, with the new DLCs coming out, there'll be even more. And that, you know, and that's not touching on mods. That's talk, this is because just to point out, I'm not using mods. I'm use, I'm using the basic game here because that's what I'm doing. I'm showing you the game as is, and I'm showing you how to play the game as is. Get back to what I was saying. You can see as I move down the different moves, I've got a different thing there for compatibility. And that's really depend. It's really that's where the, what I was talking about previously with the stats and everything comes into play. Now you might have to, you may possibly have to jump back and forth between them as you set your moves. But for the most part, now as you can see, this knife edge chops. It's a C range, so it's about mid range. You don't really need to do too much with that. You can leave that as it is, quite happily. Because to be honest, now some of you will go, oh, but you you can choose such and such a move, and it's an A, it's you know, it's the high rating. Yes, but how often are you going to use that in your match? See, this is something to think about. The small moves you're only going to use them at the start of the match, and then you know, you know, you're building up the match. So a C rating, even a D, even a D rating for the kick, it's it's fine. You know, it's nothing really. It's nothing really to concern yourself over. So as I scroll down here, you can see there's a move here. In this case, it's a diving body press. And it's got an S next to it. Now, that means that it's his signature move. Not his finisher, but it's his signature. So it's still pretty effective, especially if you use one of the skills mentioned earlier. But for those of you who do not know how you change that because you know some some of you are asking that all you do is quite simple you highlight it here and you click it disappears and then if you wanted to change it to another move like say for a say for example i want to change it to the knuckle arrow here right now i wouldn't normally use that as a signature but you know just for just for the benefit of this let's just say for whatever reason it's going to be the knuckle arrow. All you do is you click there the box next to knuckle arrow and you see the S is now in there. So that's now been assigned to the signature. It really is that simple. I mean, this, this whole system, to be honest, is quite simple. It just, it looks really complicated at first, especially if you're used to playing other types of wrestling games. You see a lot of this and you see a lot of numbers and you go, oh my God. But once you get into it, it's really not that difficult. Basically, choose whatever moves you want for your style. But what you want, as I said, what you want to keep in mind is where it says compatibility. Now, for the finisher, you probably want to go for something that's in a higher compatibility. And since that there, where did I see it? It's for a D. Let's see. So it's about average. It's fine. But I can, if I was, if I was to scroll down, I could probably find one that's got a higher rating. Or well, maybe not because I kept his I kept his stats pretty standard. No, there was was that an E did I see an E somewhere? No, that's a B. Chairs illusion now. So there's a B, so I could go with that. For the benefit. You get the idea, I'll just leave it as it is, right? Down here, as I said, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to waste too much time. I've waffled on enough, especially when we got the last sections. 
all you want to think about with that is basically right this is what I, this is what i want to do this is the move set and just keep an eye on that compatibility now and think as you go right the, some moves you're going to use more than others as i said the strikes and that you're going to use them at the start of the match yes now i personally wouldn't go for an e or a no but you can but try and keep them so you're fairly compatible with what you've got in mind and with your stats. But for your finishers, you definitely want to get them up the higher end. Get them in a, you know, get a B or an A. If you get, if you can get the finisher you want in your move set with an A, fantastic. But you might have, as I said, you might have to jump back to parameters here and play about with the stats to get them to balance up with each other. That's, you know, that's that's the bit that's probably, that's one of the bits that's probably the most time consuming. Now, people think it's this that's time consuming, CPU logic, and it can be. But me personally, I think the most time consuming part is balancing parameters and movesets. So we're starting things off here. And in the first one here, which is stand back stall. What I'm going to tell you, it pretty much, pretty much the same in all these categories here, and that's with regards to this thing here: controls, small damage, large damage, and all your different numbers here. It's pretty much the same in all these categories, but I will explain a bit more as we go. But you know what I'm going to say, pretty much, pretty much the standard for all of them. Now, how this, what they are is, they've got the small damage category, and what that is is, that's towards the start of the match, in the early stages of the match, when, you know, you know he's have only been suffering small damage. Because that's how it is in this game. It basically plays out, you, you start off with the smaller damage, you're building up with the small moves, working up to the big moves. You know, this centers around the Japanese style of wrestling and it's more about the performance than the yeah let's go for the big moves you know like WWE totally different to be honest I prefer that style of wrestling but it's down to me some of them prefer the American style it's just yeah so basically what it's saying here is that in the small damage category Near the start of the match, when the, when the opponent only has light damage, there is a 51% chance that he will go for the grapple. 12% chance that he'll stand back and do nothing. 8% chance that he'll circle his opponent, and so on and so on as we go down the list. Then, in the next category, this is the large damage. This is towards the end of the match, when both opponents have been beating the hell out of each other, and they're quite tired. And it's saying there's a 64% chance that he'll go for the grapple. Only an 8 parade. Oh, only an 8 parade. Only an 8% chance that he will go for nothing. He'll stand back. 4% he'll circle the opponent. So on and so on and so on. And as you can see, you've got your moves, your basic strikes there. And that's the likelihood that they'll do them. Now, personally, I would put them a little bit, I would put them slightly higher in the small category and maybe lower them in, maybe lower them in the large category. Because, you know, towards the start of the match, you're more likely to do strikes to wear them down, whereas, you're not, whereas later on in the match, you're more likely to go for the big moves and the big grapples. So I would sort, so personally, I would lower the, the strikes in the large category but again it's down to whatever you want i'm just going to leave it standard here long okay in the initiate grapple category it's pretty much the same as i explained for the previous category all medium large and this this is where you want to balance it out for the match obviously small starting the match you don't want to use a lot of the big fancy moves. 
So what you've got there, I mean, the knuckle arrow, that's probably fine. That's near the start of the match. The body slam, maybe a wee bit. But I would probably maybe tone them down a bit. And go more towards the strikes. Your bigger moves, especially your finisher, you really want to put them to zero. But I would probably even put super kick to zero. So that he doesn't keep spamming it. And then in medium, a little bit damaged, a little bit worn down, but it's not quite the end of the match. But you could, if you like, maybe put that up to about 5%. Might have to play around with these a bit. Balance that out. For instance, maybe, maybe put Brain Buster at about 5%. And Power Bomb at about Just an example. But again, you know, add a few more of the big moves in, but not that, you know, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't prioritise your finisher too much because, again, you don't want to keep spamming the same moves. Okay, so what you want to think about here, when you get to the large category, this is, this is the, End of the match, this is this is you looking to wrap it up. So your moves like your grap you know your, your moves like your grapples, they're coming more into play. Your strikes not so much, so you want to lower them down or just set them to zero completely. And you start thinking about your bigger moves, such as your brain buster there, your power bomb whip, which is the one that's highlighted. That's that's the finishing move as we've seen earlier. You want, you want to set that a little higher because, as I said, this is you wrapping the match up. So, you're less likely to use strikes, more likely to use finishing moves. Unless, of course, you want to, unless, of course, you want a guy that uses a lot of strikes to finish the match, then it would go the other way. It's really down to what you like. But, what you want to think is, what moves is this guy going to use to wrap up the match? And that's the ones you want to put the high, the higher percentage in, and then the other moves that you know, basic basic moves and basic and light punches and kicks, and me and suplexes. You're not going to do them towards the end of the match. Circle opponent again, self-explanatory. I usually just leave that as it is. That does the job. Same with Irish whip. Opponent against corner. This is what he does when he... This is what they do in each of these situations. And it's very self-explanatory. You don't really need to change that much. Ukemi... Now this, again... 20, 25, 15. That's the standard. That there... Pretty much does the job for most wrestlers. And to be honest with you, I very rarely change these settings. So that there, 20, 25, 15. That's perfect. That's... Uh, I personally wouldn't play around with that too much, but again, it's up to you. But do think in mind that don't. I wouldn't make any major changes with that because because basically, Ukemi is basically your character's stamina. Back on outside ring. Performance. This is the likelihood of doing taunts. Completely down to you how you set this up. But obviously, the more they do taunts, the less time they're going to spend wrestling. But, again, it's up to you. I mean, I've, I've got a character in HKWF who tends to dance around the ring a lot. Who tends to dance around the ring a lot. And people have said in the comments, why doesn't she just fight? Well, but that's the character. That's the character. She just dances around all the time. You know, so if you, obviously if you want that, then set them higher. If you don't, set them lower. It's common sense. Now, this is where things get interesting. This is the priority attack section. Now, quick explanation for you here. Going straight to the top of the list, we've got the power bomb whip, which is this character's finisher. It's the standard finisher. That he got. And it's seen small damage zero, large damage one hundred, power bomb whip, stand at head pin. Now basically what that means is 
looking at that, we've got 100% in the large damage. And it's power bomb whip stand at head. That means that 100% of the time, when the opponent goes for a power bomb whip, when, whilst the opponent has taken a large amount of damage, which is the end of the match, he will go straight into a pinfall 100% of the time. Because he's looking to end the match. But this is where it gets interesting. This is the bit I was talking about. Where it says the follow-up attack. Now, if I click that, you can see there's all different things I can select here. And what you can do here is you can create some really awesome combos with this. Case in point, there's a character I've seen in one of the other promotions, one of the other channels. Now, he's got a character who is a bit of a high flyer. And what he does, he's got it set up so that he does a big slam and then follow-up attack, taunt. And then below that, taunt, follow-up attack, Run up corner, run up corner, follow up attack, diamond elbow. And what happened is, all those moves, they're basically strung into one long combo. Now, it won't happen every single time, because it's really down to the algorithm in the game. But, the higher you put that, the more likely it is to happen. But, it's, it's, awesome, it's awesome when you see it, because, as I said, big slam. Yay! Up the corner. Whee! It's, you know, it's it looks incredible. And it's and it's all done through, through this here. The follow-up attack, priorities. Play about with the number. You might have to play about with the number to get it spot on. But once you get it, oh my god, you can create some pretty awesome moves. And some pretty awesome sequences. Showmanship. This comes down to your character's overall showmanship. Now, short version of this is the higher your showmanship, the more likely you are to do big, the, the more likely it is to go for big moves, signatures, play to the crowd a bit, so on, you know? It's pretty self explanatory. Discretion kind of plays into the same thing by 70 30. The higher the showmanship, the more likely you are to play the crowd. The higher the, your discretion, the more likely you are to waste time outside the ring. And it kind of comes into play about uh, when you're likely to get back in the ring. So that's about 30%. So he's probably going to come in about the 4 or 5 mark. Or 5 count. 20 count. Flexibility. Flexibility is how flexible he is and how well he works with other people. So 50% means, you know, pretty balanced. And that's what, what I mean by how well he works with other people. You know, how more likely he is... To try and work with a guy, sell a few years, move, put on a good match, or is or is it? It's all about me. I just want to wrap this match up as quick as possible. You know, because this game does come down to the whole put on a performance thing. But basically, your, your character's flexibility will kind of play into that and affect their attitude and personality. Likewise, it also comes into play with your teamwork as well, your corporation. Although there is an actual stat for teamwork. But, I mean, that plays into it a wee bit as well. Outside return count. This is... This is where you get the more likely to come into the ring. Discretion, as I said, is more likely how often they break the rule this time outside the ring. This year is where they actually come in. Much work, how often is basically, you know, how often they'll go for the tag.
weapons, the likelihood of using weapons, 1% is the standards. Tend to do that because they're more interested in match with less weapons. But if you want a guy that's more into the hardcore stuff, set that up. If you want a guy that likes to use weapons to cheat, tank that up. If you want a guy that likes to play by the rules and wrestle, get it lower. It's again self explanatory. Second interference. Now this is the likelihood that they can that they might interfere in another match. Or have, or have someone interfere on their behalf. 70% is quite high, that's the standard. And that about covers it for character creation. I do hope this helped. And if it did, give us a thumbs up. I'm going to show you now what's coming up in part three. Okay, so in part three, giving you a brief look, and as you can see, you can see it right there on your screen in the corner. In part three, we're going to be taking a very brief look because I will be doing a separate playlist where I go a bit deeper into this. But we'll be taking a brief look at Fire Promoter. And I'll be explaining how to get started in this mode and a few basics for you to get you, you know, to give you that little foot up the ladder if you like. So, if you want a little pointer and a little sneak peek at Fire Promoter, then do check out the next video. Wow! If you like that and you want to see more, then why not check out one of these videos over here? As recommended by YouTube! And do consider subscribing to the channel. Click this little symbol here. And do remember to click that little notification bell. That'll keep you notified of all future content and we'll see you next time.